Have you ever thought of rebranding yourself, changing the way you look, speak or behave to blend in a little bit more? If so, you're not alone. Don't talk like one of them, you're not. Even if you'd like to be. To them, you're just a freak. Like me. They need you right now. But when they don't, they'll cast you out. Why is that that we are giving to others the power to define us, to validate us, even if they are harming us? This episode explores why the society makes us feel insecure and where do we go from there. This episode is part of a whole series, so don't forget to subscribe so we can receive fresh content. But my starting question is, why do we feel this need for validation? We look for validation from the people we perceive to have power. When a baby is born, one of the very first things they do is seek eye contact. How, how we are mirrored back to tells us who we are. The problem is that we are offered two choices, either to put a mask on or to face bullying, rejection and discrimination. In both cases, this has serious consequences on our mental health. When people are trying to validate who they are, it can be a little bit of an endless loop and often yield no results or not great results that you just need to keep on going to the next piece of validation. So the things that we receive at the helpline are related to isolation and loneliness. And the thing about isolation is that it causes addiction. So at the helpline, we receive a lot of inquiries around things like pornography addiction, social media addiction, um, sex addiction, substance addiction. Who do we trust to validate us? Being a Muslim in Europe or in white dominated America is similar to being caught in an abusive relationship. At school we are taught one story, that we belong to this country and that everyone is equal. But in practice, it is not necessarily the case. If we speak to white people around us, many would say that there is no racism, microaggressions do not exist and that people are just being oversensitive. Let's call it by its name. This is gaslighting. The, the context, the political context in which we're living in right now has given certain people the, the sense of validation to be able to say things, racist opinions and views as in telling people that they've known for years or neighbours or colleagues or, or people that they, they sort of pass in the street that they should be going home now or they should go home. So it's very much about do the people around me accept me for who I am? Is what I believe okay? Is who I am okay? Um, young people wear a lot of identity hats, so things like, am I Pakistani, am I gay, am I Muslim? So I did seek a lot of validation from others and what they thought of my work, and a lot of this would sort of be through social media. In my personal relationships with people, I feel like I really needed validation from my family and I tried to be into the same things that they were into even though they weren't things that I was necessarily even interested in. No matter how hard you try you cannot be something that you're not and I personally believe and from my own experiences that no matter the harder that you try the less you're going to achieve it. Anyone who makes you feel as though you're not good enough these are the kind of people that are, I would consider toxic and they're the people that you should run from. The problem is, when we are feeling inferior and we want the balance to be restored, the society puts the burden on ourselves. Not only we need to sacrifice parts of ourselves, but we pose ourselves as the problem. It makes us believe that there is no other way of being. To be accepted by the mainstream, we are wanting to copy every single thing the mainstream does. We have halal champagne and wine, Islamic gambling, halal speculative banking, we even have a Muslim Justin Bieber and several Muslim Kim Kardashians. Everything's a copy of a copy of a copy. From lip fillers to rhinoplasty, 
hair transplant, steroids and the most extreme breast enhancement, plastic surgery has become popular amongst Muslims. Journalist Rukaya Harris has been interviewing people and finds out that the recourse to plastic surgery mainly comes pressure from the outside. The people she interviews acknowledge it is submitting to European beauty standards and point at the pressures mainly coming from social media. Those are superficial qualities, those qualities around um, Eurocentric standards of beauty, typically those who have been marginalised, those who have been colonised. In order to achieve some sense of validation, they needed to mimic the behaviours of those who were colonisers and their oppressors. And we still carry a lot of that mindset and that mentality even today. Each day I would dispose of as much loose skin, fingernails and hair as possible to limit how much of my invalid self I would leave in the valid world. When I talk to people, I often hear many wanting to see a Muslim Mark Zuckerberg, a Muslim Richard Branson, or even a Muslim Robert Murdoch. Yes, you heard me right. Why does no one dream of becoming a British Al-Ghazali, a British Malcolm X, or a British Rabia Basri? This idea of success is defined in relation to whiteness, fame, wealth, or influence. People would argue that you are only changing the outside and that Islam remains in your heart. Some other people would argue that we need to seek representation of Muslims in the mainstream at any cost. Good to see another brother around here. <sighs> yes, of course it is. If we look at black and Latino people in the US, whether it is in the music industry, business or politics, decades of research show that little change has been achieved regarding their political, social or economic situation. Did President Barack Obama stop the shooting of black innocent teenagers in the streets? However, I wonder, is it possible to seek a healthy form of validation? And the idea of healthy validation is that it has empathy at its heart. But I think some kind of process where you start to learn about yourself and that you share that with other people who you trust, I think is the key. And I think we find this in Islamic psychology as well, with this re really important premise around who knows themselves knows their Lord. Well, it was actually after I'd gotten over that lowest point of my life that I felt like a lot of things around me changed and I didn't care as much about what people thought of me um, and whether I was good enough. All that my focus was at that point was to work on myself. I think we should seek validation from people who we love and respect. Being around people that make, that lift you up and that who when they do need to criticise you, they do so in a loving manner. Any sort of criticism that they give me it would always be for the betterment of myself and it would help me grow. Uh, when you see certain people on social media um, bragging about their lifestyles, which are not even always real, um, you need to cut down your time on social media or immediately unfollow these pages. Because when there's empathy, there's a genuineness and an authenticity of, I am willing to understand your experience and to, to truly validate how this is for you. I think it's worth talking to people actually and figuring out what their journeys were. I think what we need to do is define success on a much more micro scale and think about, so for example, um, someone going through anxiety. Success for them is, I got on the tube, I didn't have a panic attack. That is fantastic. And I think really it's about defining success for yourself um, and not making it a goal, making it just something that you do every day. This is how I want to live my life. But at the end of the day, you, just by being you, are worthy. Hey, what do you let those boys push you around like that for? Well, they're bigger than me. Stand tall, boy. Have some respect for yourself. Don't you know if you let people walk over you now, they'll be walking over you for the rest of your life. There are several prophetic sayings about not comparing ourselves to those who have wealth or power, but instead with those who have a better character. So let's choose carefully who do we give the power to validate us. For those who want to explore the topic further, there is a list of articles, books and other references in the description of this video. And keep yourself updated on news, facts and much more by subscribing to The Muslim Vibe. Thanks for watching and until next time, inshallah. No matter how much you want to dye your hair blonde and put fake eyes in, 
follow an anorexic standard of beauty Or no matter how many diamonds you buy from people who exploit your own Brutally to get them No matter what kind of car you drive Or what kind of fancy clothes you put on You will never be them They're always gonna look at you as nothing but a little monkey I'd rather be proud of what I am Rather than desperately try to be something I'm really not Just to fit in